Yeah, I mean, I, great ball game. Kids compete their tails off. Obviously, a really hard place down here to win. Coach Solich, tip of the cap to him and his crew. The kids played really hard. We knew that was going to be a four-quarter battle. Kind of turned into one of those games where we're going back and forth, back and forth, and whoever could kind of break serve first, um, you know, was knew you're going to have an advantage. Um, Want to have the third and short call back? That's on me um, to give the kids a better opportunity there at the end, where they ended up breaking our serve, and that ended up being the difference in the game. But kids fought hard. Need to clean some things up, obviously, but it starts with the plan and the coaching more so than anything else. And we put our kids in the best position to succeed. But really pleased with the effort of the preparation and just kind of get back to work, put our nose down, put the blinders on, pull together, and, and go forward as we get to come back home and defend Dix. Talk about Rourke. I, you know he's good coming in, obviously. Talk Who's that? I'm sorry. Nathan Rourke. Yeah. Just his effort, what he's able to do against you. Yeah, I, I mean, one of the premier players in our league for a reason. I mean, the accolades are, are, are well earned. Um, really dual threat kid who, who was really efficient on first down that kept them ahead of schedule most of the day. Um, you know, and was able to move the ball, all move the ball downfield. Really accurate passer. Had some big plays um, as advertised. I mean, and we got to do a better job containing him. Coach, could you talk about the uh, defense today? Yeah, I mean, thought they did a really solid job against the run, and, and we did some things to limit the run game. And then in the back end, you know, if you if you commit numbers to the run game, you got to hold up in the back end. Um, did some things that were really, really well. Um, did some things that we got to improve on, you know. But um, again, that starts with the plan and what we're doing as a, as coaches. First and foremost, that's on us, the positions that we are putting them in. So we'll be better for them. We got great kids that are highly coachable, that want to win, that are doing the things that winning requires, and, and we'll get back to winning next week. How are they able to limit your offense in the third quarter? Uh, you know, just kind of opportunities, first and foremost, right? I mean, we, we didn't maximize our first possession, and then I believe they sat on the ball, and they did a nice job taking the air out of the ball. Um, so we had, you know, kind of one, one and a half possessions, so just limiting the snaps, um, which, again, tip of the cap to them. Coach, there was a third and 20 before uh, halftime OU, you know, converting and then uh, scoring. What did that do going into halftime on your momentum there? The, the one that we converted? That they converted. That they converted, yeah. I mean, obviously, in that down and distance, you want to get off the field. Um, and we wanted to obviously limit them to points before they went into the half so that you could go in with, with an advantage. Um, so, again, things that we got to see on the tape, exactly what the breakdown was with that. Um, but, again, it, it's on us as coaches to make sure our kids are in the best position, first and foremost. Coach, when you named Dustin Crum QB1, did you envision him having amazing statistical games like this? Because this, this was, without question, his best statistical game team. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason that he earned that opportunity, right? Through his preparation, he was one of the most productive kids, um, really managed all the critical situations that we put him in. And then we took the opportunity, you know, we told him that there wasn't a short leash to run with it. And if you take hold of it, it's going to be yours. He's done that. He's got the respect of the team. And obviously the production speaks for itself because of the way he goes about preparing week in and week out. So really pleased with what he's done and the opportunity that he has and, and where he's taken us. Can you talk about what's going through your mind on that third and 10 incompletion where I think it was Hagen got a hand on it at the last second in the fourth quarter there? I don't know exactly which one like you're it was, talking it was about. A deep ball. Oh, oh, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, yeah, yeah. up third sideline. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I mean, just that, you know, we had a look that we wanted, um, you know, wanted us to get set a little bit quicker to go. Thought we kind of had an advantage there with tempo. Um, and, and then, you know, we just got to play a little bit of pit, pitch and catch, you know. But again, Hagen, he's, again, he'll probably be a first team all conference safety this year and big time players step up and make big time plays in these types of games that need to be must win situations. So again, that, I mean, that's a great job by him. Maybe it made an impactful play a year ago in this game. And, and that's what, Good players do. They show up and make plays. Can you talk about Isaiah McCoy? I mean, a few mistakes there, but I, I see him down on the sideline. Can you talk to, about him as a player and just him throughout the game? Yeah, I mean, one of our most explosive kids, obviously still really young. He's played a lot of football, so I think kind of get, it gets looked past with how young he still is as a true sophomore. So learning how to make sure that he's never too high, never too low, so that he can be consistently good and not just occasionally great. But kid's got a bright future, works his tail off, has really grown with his maturity this year, and looking forward to all the strides that he's going to have in the future. Coach, I know you're not a moral victories guy, but what, what's going through your mind after hanging in? with a team that a lot of people picked to win the conference in the preseason. I mean, I'm pleased with the way that our kids fought and the way that they prepared. I think our attention to detail needs to continue to go up and continue to improve. Um, you know, the process that we have to win, our kids are doing a great job holding that in high regard. Um, to your point, I'm not a moral victory guy. There's lessons that need to be learned here about the way in which that we have to be very attentive to our jobs, to our tasks, and that there's no details that's too small because that could be the difference between a tight ball game, a one possession ball game such as this, and the games that we're going to have down the stretch. So it's not so much taking the moral victories, but the lessons of, hey, go into a hostile environment, play a team that knows how to win, that has been there, and us taking the lessons from today and shaping that going forward so that we continue to learn how to win and have sustained success like the way I know we can. When you guys go into film tomorrow, uh, what's going to be some of the things you stress to uh, your defense in particular? 
I, hard to tell right now and, until I look at it myself, you know. Um, so got to see it. And, and then we always have on it Sunday to where we got to remove the egos. We got to detach the emotions and just grow and improve and get better. So when I get a chance to look at the tape, I'll have a better idea of what that is. All right, guys, Bob, one more question. Can you talk about that uh, fumble recovery by OU? You guys came up with the ball. What happened there? And what, the, one was the, the one on the punt return? Yes. What was explained to you there? Yeah, just that uh, I believe it was number 14 that he got on the ball first. He rolled over onto his back. So they said that he had possession of the ball, which, I, you know, I, I think he did. And then I thought he landed on a defender. They said that he landed on the ground. So with possession of the ball, he lands on his back, plays dead. Obviously, we come out of it. But I, I think it's a good call. I, I thought I was mistaken. I thought there was a player underneath. So the rest did a good job handling that. Can I do one more, Dan? One more quick one. Uh, any comment on Bangda and Xavier moving forward, their status? Just getting healthy day by day. You know, they, they we have been working them slowly in, and we just got to see how they continue to progress. They're both injuries that we don't want to linger by bringing them back too fast. Okay. Thanks, yep, cool. Thanks, Thanks guys. Coach. Appreciate it.